Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about addition of halogens onto the alkenes and those reactions are going to be called the halogenation of alkenes. If I take a generic example where I have an ethene, so CH2 double bond CH2, and I'm going to add some sort of halogen onto it, so I can go ahead and change the color of the halogen that's going to be being added, so X2. So this X2 uh, is either going to be the Cl2 or the Br2, those are the two most commonly used. And this reaction is going to be done in the presence of a nonpolar solvent, typically carbon tetrachloride. So that's just a solvent there. When these uh, halogen or these X are going to be added onto those double bonded carbons, you don't have to worry about the reduced selectivity because both of those gonna, carbons are going to be getting the same type of atom. However, in terms of stereochemistry, they are going to be added anti to one another. What that really means, if one halogen is pointed one way or let's say down then the other halogen is going to be pointed up so that's going to be your anti addition of these uh, halogens now you don't really have to worry about this anti addition if the given carbons are not chiral you only have to worry about if they are chiral and that's where it plays an important role but still you want to make sure you know it's an anti addition whenever you are adding those halogens Let's look at a mechanism to understand the stereochemistry a little bit more. Uh, so suppose I'm using a Br2 here, so two Brs in the presence of carbon tetrachloride. So the first step is going to be the addition or the nucleophilic attack onto that electrophile. So one of those bromines is going to be acting as an electrophile there, and the bond between the bromines break and the lone pair goes on to the second bromine there. So first step, you make this uh, halonium ion where both of those carbons are actually bonded with the bromine. That's just going to be attacked by the pi bond there. So you get a positive charge there, and then obviously you're making a Br minus there. That's going to be your nucleophile in the next step. So this ion that you make or intermediate you make is going to be called the bromonium ion. The common name for that would be the holonium ion. All right, so your next step is going to be just the attack of nucleophile. So your nucleophile, which is going to be the bromine in this case, that could do um, an attack on both of those positions. Basically, I could have that attack either, you know, coming down here, or even on the other one. Doesn't really matter. Uh, but in either case, you will have a anti-attack of this nucleophile because you already have a bromine kind of sticking out to one side. So this nucleophile is going to be attacking from the opposite side. And then this bond is going to break. And as a result, so you're going to have this uh, one of the bromines is going to be pointed up like this and the other bromine is going to be pointed down. So in terms of uh, making that stereochemistry, uh, obviously the second carbon is going to be your chiral center. So I can have this bromine coming out of the page like this one. So and that means the first bromine, uh, first carbon bromine is going to be going back into the page. And you don't necessarily have to show that because that first carbon is not even chiral center. So that's your one possibility. The other possibility would be what if uh, the original bromonium ion that was made in that case the bromine was going back into the page uh, so in that case you could have this going back into the page and your uh, bromine on the first carbon will be coming out of the page so like I said you don't really have to draw the first carbon bromine in and out of the page because that's not even a chiral center but just for the showing purposes that they are being added anti to one another I just showed that uh, in and out of the page so to be more consistent, you can just draw that bromine um, just with a regular bond and not showing that in and out of the page because that's not a chiral center. So at the end of the day, you have a possibility of making these uh, enantiomers there. All right, another way of saying racemic mixture in this particular case. And, you know, that's not obviously going to be the possibility possibility, you may see uh, slightly different types of uh, stereochemistry depending on what type of uh, 
how can you really dealing with it? and I'll take an uh, example in a little bit let's look at this next example and suppose I'm adding a CL2 on this particular one so you don't really have to draw the mechanism but to uh, be able to quickly predict the product since you already know uh, what's gonna be the stereochemistry and how these things are being added so I could have one of these chlorines coming out of the page on one carbon that means on the other carbon this chlorine needs to be going back into the page and that's gonna push uh, this methyl group that's on that was on the first carbon going back into the page like this so that's your one possibility and then your second possibility move this down a little bit your second possibility would have been the opposite where let me redraw copy that here where I can have the chlorine on the first carbon going coming out of the page like this in that case your methyl is going to be going back into the page so your chlorine on the second carbon it will be going back into the page to make sure they're anti to one another so you make a a mixture of an anti-merge there so they are going to be the racemic mixture in this particular case let's look at an example where you actually start out with like in a trans alkene or a cis alkene and how you really deal with those so those are a little bit challenging to kind of deal with or kind of see so there is uh, some trick that you can use so suppose i'm adding br2 on here and uh, the first thing i really want to do even though this is not a three-dimensional structure um, I would understand this a little bit better if I make this uh, three-dimensional structure where suppose this is my double bond in the middle and you know I got a methyl group there and the methyl group there and then I got other hydrogens down there so um, the groups that are actually coming down right there suppose they are coming out of the page and the group they are on the other side suppose they are going back into the page so what I want to do I want to go ahead and draw out this CH3 going back into the page and so this hydrogen going back into the page and I want to go ahead and draw this methyl group coming out of the page like this and coming out of the page here okay so that's what the uh, how it's gonna look like so then what I want to do now I want to go ahead and have this brom bromonium ion made in this particular case and you can make that bromonium ion either you know out of the page or down the page so let's suppose I make this bromonium ion by having this attacking here that's coming out so I'm just going to copy this down for the sake of time here and I'll take out uh, one of the double bonds there So then, let me change the color so your bromine that's going to be added, suppose it's added like this. Okay, so that's your one possibility. And uh, then uh, what's going to happen, your, in, your nucleophile that's going to be coming in, that could be either attacking... Uh, I'm going to number these carbons as one and two. So I'm just going to be only referring to that that where the double bonds were. So their incoming nucleophile now, it's, it could be attacking either the first carbon or the second carbon. Uh, really doesn't matter. So there is two possibilities. So I'll, I'll drop both of those one by one. So your first possibility is, suppose if your bromine attacks right here, then you are going to be breaking up that bond and uh, this is how your product is going to look like so let me just go ahead and draw that on the on the bottom here so everything else is going to be the same so the way it's going to look like your br one of the br is going to be right here and the other br is going to be right here so if I, you know, rearrange this so that I can see it a little bit better in terms of uh, remaking it, so that's going to replicate that to um, bromine, one bromine scope down here. There's 
and change the colors just kind of draw the bromines so those bromines are right here so they're opposite to one another and then uh, leave the other stuff as it is so you're going to have this methyl group going back into the page your hydrogen is still coming out of the page here and then on the other side your hydrogen is right there and your methyl group is coming back uh, coming out of the page there so that's your one possibility but uh, so let's say this is going to be your uh, product a the other possibility is obviously going to be if you use your bromine here the nickel file and it attacks on the other side like right here so when that attacks on the other side and this is going to come out so that's you're going to be a second product there so I'm just going to go ahead and write down plus here and make the final product there so in that case what's going to happen your bromine is actually going to be downward so if I go ahead and draw this out here so on carbon number one, and this is carbon number two, so on carbon number one, you can clearly see that bromine is going to be right here. And on carbon number two, your bromine is going to be pointed up. And uh, worry about drawing the other stuff now. Just leave them as they are going to be looking like. So when you are drawing the other ones, we're going to have um, still your methyl group is going to be coming out of the page like this and your hydrogen is still right there and the same story your one of the methyl groups are right there and your hydrogen is right there so the question is what's really a different uh, relation between those two products that you just have made so it's a and b right there and to answer that better you may want to figure out what the chirality uh, going to be on those two centers there so suppose i'm looking at uh, this one right there so on that chiral center this would have been one two three your hydrogen is already back into the page so one two three that's going to be your r and uh, when i look at my second one there second chiral center this one right there that's going to be one here two here three here and obviously your hydrogen is going to be four but that's coming out of the page so you do have to flip it so when you flip it it's actually going to be an s so you got an r and s there let's check what's going on in the second structure that you got there so in the second structure clearly um let's look at this second chiral center first so we got one two and three and your hydrogen is four that's so coming out of the page and you cannot flip it so one two three seems like it's going counterclockwise but when you flip it it's going to be an r there and then what's going on with your first chiral center which is going to be this one right there so that would be uh, one here two here three here so that's going to be your s so you get an r and s in both of those structures so what's going to be the relation between those two well remember there is an internal plane of symmetry so if there is an internal plane of symmetry and uh, one side is the mirror image of the other side those two structures are going to be the meso compound so anytime you do an halogenation on these trans alkenes where you have uh, the trans means that both sides are going to be the same the left side and the right side and uh, whenever you do this uh, halogenation you're going to be getting a pair of meso compounds or another way of saying you're going to be getting the same compound but that's not going to be the case when you do the addition to the cis alkene so when i'm running the cis alkene suppose we're going to go ahead and draw out the hydrogen here and the hydrogen here so if i go ahead and draw that out in the form of three-dimensional structure here so i can have these methyl groups coming out of the page Then I can have these hydrogens going back into the page like this. So, very similar. Suppose I'm adding Cl2 in this case. So, the first step is just going to be the attack of uh, nickel file. 
onto that electrophile. So you're going to be making this uh, chloronium ion in this case. So let me just duplicate that here. Take that out. So suppose my chlorine now is going to be uh, looking like this momentarily. Positive. So then I can have two possibilities where, um, let's say, in one case, we're going to have this chlorine coming out of coming from one side chloride ion and uh, maybe attacking this carbon number one and that would open up the bond there so then how's that going to look like um, if i just go ahead and copy this down again so that i can just draw uh, based on that get rid of the double bond there so then your chlorine obviously one of them is going to be right here and your other chlorine is going to be right here and if i go ahead and redraw this structure just to kind of see that better um, this is how it's going to look like so we got those chlorines right here and then everything else stays the same so you're going to have a methyl group coming out of the page here I'm going to have hydrogen going back into the page. Same story on the other side. This methyl group is coming out of the page, and this hydrogen is going back into the page. So that's going to be your final structure in this for this particular one. And obviously, you could attack on the other side as well, or carbon number two. So if the chloride does attack onto the second carbon here, then let's see how your products are going to look like. So I'm just going to copy this down actually. I'm going to erase the chlorine in a minute. So now, all of a sudden, I'm going to have uh, one of the chlorines right here, and the other chlorine is going to be right here. So let's see what's going to be the difference there. If I rearrange this, so that's going to be so those are going to be your chlorines right there and then I can go ahead and draw the remaining stuff there so your methyl group is still going to be coming out of the page there and then your hydrogen group is still going back into the page same story on the other side I got uh, this methyl group now right there and this hydrogen is going to be right there so then the question is since you made these two products what's going to be the relation between those two products so let's call this a and call this b and obviously to answer that you got to figure out what the chirality is going to be on each of those centers so suppose i'm looking at this right there and uh, if I go ahead and call this 1, 2, 3, that's going counterclockwise, so that's going to be an S. And uh, we'll do the same thing on the second chiral center, so suppose this one right there. So 1, 2, 3, so that's going counterclockwise as well, so that's going to be an S and S in this particular case. But when I'm looking at my second structure, so we'll do something similar. Let's figure out the chirality here. That's going to be 1, 2, Three, and now your hydrogen, well, still is going back into the page. So it's going to be clockwise, so it's going to be an R. And uh, let's do the other one, this guy right there. Uh, one, two, three. So that's, again, going to be going R. So you're making, actually, a pair of enantiomers there. Or you can say you're going to be making racemic mixtures here. But uh, when you used the transalkene, you did not really make the racemic mixtures, but rather made the meso compound. So that's a one big difference when you're doing these reactions. And a lot of times students don't understand what really happens when you have these cis and transalkenes and, and you have these halogenation, halogenation reactions um, taking place there. All right, so that's all you really need to know about the halogenation of alkenes. If you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.